Good evening everybody, it is Charlie here and welcome back to another video on the Chatting Leeds YouTube channel. Hope everyone's had a great Tuesday so far, it's time for another video. Um, yeah, th guys, this is just going to be like another waffling session and another mini rant, if you will. Um, really, really worried um, about the state of affairs at Leeds United at the moment um, and I just felt that I needed to come on and air some more frustration. So just before we get into it, as always, please smash that like button. It really does help get the video out there. Please subscribe to the channel if you are brand new to help me reach 3K as soon as possible. Hit the notification bell so that you're always aware of when I'm uploading and going live. And of course, share all of your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. So yeah, obviously, the past sort of week or so now, it's all just been a massive, a massive shit show, basically. Um, I feel just so disinterested with it all at the moment. And we shouldn't be feeling like this at, at this point of a season anyway. We're, we're two games in. And it's not even the football itself that most people are frustrated about. Obviously, the Cardiff game... We did well to fight back to get a point, although Cardiff are absolutely atrocious, so we should have beat them, especially with the team we had out that day as well. Birmingham was awful, but I thought it was awful from both teams. I don't think Birmingham deserved that win at all. And if there's Birmingham fans out there who think they did deserve that, you want your heads testing because it's not true. We definitely deserved that, um, at least a point in that game. I think both teams were equally as bad. Um, but obviously, Dan James um, gives away the penalty, which leads to their goal. But it's just everything surrounding the club at the minute. It just feels like, like I said, a, a, an absolute shit show. I, I think Banter FC is officially back. I feel like we've gone back in time and Chilino's running the club. We've got Dave Ockaday in charge. You know, we've got Matthew Pennington, we've got Stephen Warnock, Michael Tong, Michael Brown, Paul Green. You know, we've got all the band back together and it, it just feels that bad at the minute. feels that bleak and people might think I'm exaggerating. Maybe I am. I'm just in an absolute dire mood at the moment. You know, Leeds have got a game this week against West Brom on Friday night. Really not looking forward to that whatsoever. Um West Brom have had a, a mixed start as well. Obviously, they got beat on the opening day, but then they did beat Swansea at the weekend. So, you know, they've got two points on us. You know, I, I just feel like we're we're playing catch up. I get it. The championship is a long season. You know, there's managers who have taken over teams that are bottom of the league that have got ended up in the playoffs. You know, it is it is easy to work your way back up, albeit if we can sign some players and get playing the right football. But obviously. Parag Marate did an interview um, just after the takeover was official on the official Leeds United podcast. And I think looking back at that interview now, he probably should have kept his mouth shut just a little bit. Um, he still could have kind of said what he said, but not as confidently as, as he said it. You know, saying that it's going to be an aggressive transfer window um, that we hope to keep hold of key assets. Um, that it was going to give Daniel Farker the tools and, you know, a real strong squad to hopefully get promoted at, at the first time of asking and have a strong season. Has any of that happened yet? The aggressive transfer window has been non-existent. Yes, we've signed four players, but Ethan Ampadu for, what, a fee rising up to £10 million. Carl Darlow for 400 k Sam Byram on a free. Um, and obviously, Joe Rodon is a loan deal. So, in essence, we've spent about ten and a half million. Where's the parachute payments? I get Leeds United have got, you know, fees that they have to pay out for players that we already own. You know, obviously, as it is spread over the length of their contract. You know, the likes of maybe I think we're still paying for Dan James. We're still paying for Brendan Aronson, Rasmus Christensen, and players like that. I, I assume. So I, I do get that, but the 49ers and Prag, Prag Marate, sorry, will have known all this, taking over the club, and he still 
spoke like that on that podcast, it just irks me. And I'm sure it irks everyone else that I just don't want them to end up like Red Rizani, where they, they talk the talk, but they can't walk the walk. Um, I get it. You know, well, I say I get it. There's 16 days left of the transfer window. And in my opinion, we need a minimum of five more players. Six probably, but I'll I'll say a bare minimum we need five. Do I think we'll get five in the next 16 days? No, I think we'll get about three. I think we will sign some players. It just won't be enough. And that's the annoying thing. I feel like we might sign one or two over the next two weeks and then the last few days of the window and deadline day, It'll be panic stations and we'll end up probably overpaying for a player. We'll get a few loans in quick. And it's just, it just feels like I just can't be arsed with it. Like to the point where usually at work with lads, you know, I'll sit and I love talking about leads. We get into the game. We have a little bit of a moan about the game. We have a laugh about it as well. Literally, someone brought up Leeds today and I actually said, can we just not talk about it? Because I'm not in the mood to talk about it. I know I'm doing it now, which is why I kind of wanted to come on here and just vent my frustrations. Genuinely, guys, I said it on the last say overnight. If we do not sign the right amount of players that we need, we won't even get playoffs. It's, it, it's as simple as that. In, in my opinion. Yeah, if we sign two or three players, it depends on the quality of those players. I get that. But we still need a load more bodies in this squad. We may push for playoffs if we only sign a few, but then, and I get that there's the January window as well, but by that point, we could be quite a far distance back. We could be struggling. And it's a lot to do in only a few months af after the new year. I, I just, the best signing we've made this summer is Daniel Farker. The only positive thing about the club at the minute is him. The way he's conducting himself, the way that, the way he speaks in press conferences, you know, he said, you know, he was aware that it would be a bumpy start given the hangover from being relegated from the Premier League. He knew about the loan clauses, these stupid, stupid loan clauses in these contracts that the last regime have, have left us with. I absolutely despise Victor Orta with a passion. How that man is employed in Sevilla, one of the biggest clubs in Spain, is an absolute travesty. Radrazan is a clown as well. I was going to say a different word there, but I won't. A clown. And then you've got Angus Kinnear, who's still at the club, weirdly. What's he doing? You know, he's the CEO. He'll have known about the loan clauses. He'll have known about these contracts. He'll have known everything. But yeah, he's still employed at the club. Victor Orta and Rad's are gone now, so why is he there? He's just as much to blame as them, in my opinion, and he's still at the club. You know, I think the LUFC fans trust or someone like that has put up a vote of no confidence against Angus Kinnear and I can understand it. Like, why is he still at the club? Why is he still employed here? After his track record over, over the last two, three years. You see Leicester getting linked with Elias Chair at QPR. They've just signed that Italian kid from Chelsea on loan. I get it. They had probably bigger assets that they could sell on, i.e. James Madison, Harvey Barnes, and then you've got Southampton who have sold Ward Prowse. They're on the verge um selling Ward Prowse, sorry, and then they're on the verge of selling Romeo Lavia. So, you know, I get it. They've, you know, their FFP's in a better state than ours. But why can't we just be ran like a normal football club for God's sake? Honestly, I'm very, very stressed out with it at the moment. Very stressed. Um, very worried. You know, it's another day with no news. Yesterday, we kind of had a bit of news where there was a bid made for a, an unnamed striker. Thought it was Cameron Archer. 
Cameron Archer now wants a Premier League move, apparently. Then you've got Elias Chair, who would be perfect for us, being linked with Leicester, and they'll probably get him. We're always too late to the party, aren't we? And it could really bite us on the arse this season. I've... Unless we... Again, unless we have a good end to the transfer window, I've already resigned myself to the fact that we'll be playing in the Championship again next season. I've already accepted it, partly. But again, I'm not 100% judging it until the end of the window, until September 1st. The good thing for me is that I'll be on holiday when the transfer window ends. So if it ends badly, I can drown my sorrows in the sun. But then I've had to come home and deal with the fact that we've got a bang average squad and we're probably going to have a bang average season. We'll be disappointing. I was in. I was so optimistic going into this season, especially with Farker as coach. Takeover got done. I listened to that interview that Paragmarate did, and I was I was buzzing at work. I was like, "Yes, we're going to be signing this player, this player, this player." And it just hasn't gone like that. You might think, "Yeah, but you signed four players." Yeah, but Ampadu, Ampadu aside, they're just average signings, aren't they? Joe Rodon's actually quite a good signing. So Sam Byram's on a free. And Carl Darlow is just a backup keeper, it seems. No first team quality is being added at all. And Daniel Farker must be pulling his hair out at Thorpe Parch. Really, really feel for the bloke. But yeah, I'll leave it there, guys. Otherwise, I will just keep on waffling. So yeah, just thought I'd come on and vent my frustrations. It's another day without any news. Oh, actually, the Tyler Adams to Bournemouth. I didn't discuss that last night. 20 million quid. Not bothered about it at all. Um, bang average midfielder. He had passion. He had desire. But that's the least that you should have. His footballing ability was very average. Um, but if he, if he fancies Bournemouth, fair enough. Let's get that 20 million and get it spent on this squad. But yeah, another day of no news regarding incomings. Um, so we will leave it there for this evening. If you've enjoyed the video, guys, please smash a like on it. It really does help get it out there to more people. Please subscribe if you are brand new. Hit the notification bell. And of course, get all of your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. I will be back on the channel tomorrow evening um, with my match preview. I usually do my preview the night before the game, but I am busy on Thursday evening, unfortunately, guys. So the preview will be out tomorrow ahead of West Brom on Friday. So make sure that you tune in for that. And I'll see you then. Cheers.